welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my six out of seven day posting marathon. We are almost there. And I realized I didn't have a video today, so I'm going to be posting this right after I film it. And we're gonna continue crocheting mittens. If you haven't watched part one of this, make sure to go check it out. I'm also answering questions that you guys asked in the comment. And today's video, I'll be focusing more on the one question I talked about yesterday where it asks how I balance all the aspects of my life, like my business, my work, my school, my life, all of that. So I will be kind of instilling my philosophy that is ingrained in my head from my dad who always says this. So I will tell you the secret now. Sorry, I'm just gonna crochet a little bit first before I get into it. So chain two, skip the first stitch. Okay, single crochet and the next one. This is harder to do while I'm talking. Oh my gosh, I actually have to think. <laughs> so the first thing I wanna say is the 80-20 principle. My dad always talks about this. If you ask like any question, he will find a way to start talking about the 80-20 principle. So basically it's whatever input you have, like you put 20% input, hopefully you'll get 80% output. And you can see this pattern in a lot of things. So I wrote some examples. So since I make YouTube videos, it's most likely that not all of them do well and only a couple of them get most of the views. So in this case, 20% of my videos make up 80% of my views and the other 20% is just kind of like the rest, you know? It's like not making that much of an impact on my channel. In terms of a business, um, you could say if you have 10 products, two of those products will probably be more popular than the other ones. It's really hard to think and crochet at the same time. Most likely, two of the products will make up 80% of your profit or your sales, and the other eight products will be the 20% of your sales, if that makes sense. What does SP stand for? I didn't know what a spiked single, that's a thing. Okay, I think I got the hang of this. Guys, I'm still learning too. So anyway, <laughs> the reason I'm talking about the 80-20 principle, which kind of seems random, basically saying like, what are your priorities? Like my priority is my shop and then my videos, but I found a way to do them together. So that's great. What am I even saying? I don't know what I'm saying. Say I know that certain videos do better than others, which I do know that. I focus more on those videos because I know they'll do better. But I still like making other videos like my music and that kind of thing because I enjoy it. And so the 80-20 principle helps you find what would be most valuable to you and for you to use your time on. A lot of people do it unintentionally, so you might even be doing it right now, you just don't know. This is a really complicated pattern. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna start following it from now on. Wait, I don't know if I can do this while I'm talking though. Okay, I'm just gonna continue talking and hope for the best. I will finish this eventually. <laughs> so this will help you prioritize your life in terms of what can I spend my time on that will give me the most output. The second point you have to consider is what you're passionate about. So what's your hobby and what brings you joy and what brings joy to others. So my hobby is crocheting, obviously, and I know it brings joy to others when I give them gifts and it brings joy to me because it's relaxing. Unless I'm on a time crunch, then it's pretty stressful. And other things you have to consider is your relationships, your hobbies, your exercise, spirituality, and love. And that all goes into what you're passionate about because those things probably won't make you rich, but it is good for your soul and you still have to focus on those types of things as well. So first is obviously your financial situation and then second is your happiness and those are the two main things you have to balance and when they meet in the middle that's when you're at the golden spot when you're passionate about something and you can make money from it that's the goal everybody you don't want to make money from something you don't like 
it's the most rewarding when you make money from something you do like so if i could eventually make profit from this business that would be a dream that really would but i am in film school and that is also what i'm passionate about so but i'm also combining like my business with my crochet with like making videos so i kind of found a way but i'm hoping to grow more and this has like helped me learn so much especially like over the past few months i've learned so much gained so much experience thanks to you guys and now that we got that over with how to balance everything how can you really accomplish it? So planning and scheduling, number one. In my last video, I said make a to-do list. I still stand by that, but also make sure you have like a schedule. So like an hour by hour kind of look for your day. Then it'll help you organize it in your head. Scheduling makes it more likely to actually happen and for you to actually do it. Cause if you just write, I don't know, like paint or exercise then i don't know maybe you will get to it but it's more likely that you will if you say like exercise at 2 p.m then your your brain knows like oh it's 2 p.m i gotta exercise now this is so pretty <laughs> i love this oh my gosh i'm so excited okay once you've nailed those three the next thing you have to consider is making sure you have enough time to accomplish everything. Cause yeah, you could plan all you want, you could schedule all you want, but in the end, you only have 24 hours in a day. So I would suggest, so this is something I need to work on, saying no. I say yes to like everything that comes my way and in the end, I am completely stressed. I am so stressed. Like obviously I get through it, I finish it, but at the end, I'm just like, I should have just said no, that that was such a headache. And I still don't learn from it, I still say yes, so it's good to start when you're younger because eventually if you keep saying yes, you're gonna have no time to yourself and self self-love is important. You gotta relax once in a while, you can't always be working. That's kind of the stage I'm at where I'm working 24-7, even if it's crocheting, like now for me it's work because people are paying me to do it so but i yeah i just don't i don't have time to crochet for myself anymore i really want to get to that sweater vest i have the yarn i just need the time yeah so consider all those points i'm gonna edit it in a way that what oh okay cool hopefully i can edit this video in a way that what i said made sense because I'm sorry, I'm tired. I don't know what I just said. <laughs> I'm gonna read some other questions out just for my phone. So Play Duck Godzilla asked, um, is starting a crochet business worth it? I know a lot of people are saying like they're scared of starting it or they don't have time or like how do I balance everything? And, and you have to be like passionate about what you're gonna sell, especially if it's handmade and you're spending hours and hours because if you're not passionate about it, you're just kind of like, wasting time being miserable and the second thing is the pricing like for me i know i'm not getting in terms of like if you think a minimum wage i'm not getting back what i could earn if i just got a minimum wage job which i do have so i'm kind of doing both i'm not, i didn't start my crochet business to make money i kind of just did it so i could pay for all my yarn <laughs> and I just enjoy crocheting things for other people and seeing them genuinely happy when they receive what they bought and I'm, I don't know, it just makes me happy to make things for other people. So that's kind of why I started it. So if it's worth making one, it depends on what your goals are. If you have lots of time, then yeah, go for it. But if you don't have a lot of time and you want to open this because you're passionate about it, also go for it. But if you're doing this for like a full-time job, you gotta look at your pricing and it's hard because not a lot of people find value. Like there's, there's certain types of people who find value in handmade items and are willing to spend a lot of money on them. Like Hope Macaulay, I love her stuff. It's so expensive, but I know how much work goes into it and maybe in the future I will invest in one. But it's like that kind of thing where 
are people gonna buy the knockoff that's cheaper or are people gonna buy the real thing and the thing that people put effort in but it's way more expensive so that's why i think it's really hard to actually make a business for a full-time job unless it's like not crochet and it's like something that's really easy and fast to make but you can just sell it for cheaper but i'm talking about crochet specifically and like knitting you gotta price it well and you gotta find the right audience to sell to your target audience and then it could be worth it for me i don't focus too much on that just because i'm not focused on making lots and lots of profit because i have a side job anyway so it's that's what i do to make money <laughs> not crochet definitely not crochet i'm probably not making any profit right now if i'm being honest like if i include my time definitely no <laughs> I just kind of went on a tangent right there. I'm so sorry, I'm not crocheting. <laughs> so I hope that answered your question. I, I, I kind of blanked out when I said what I said. <laughs> I hope that made sense. Um, play duck also, oh, actually it's platy duck. Uh, sorry, I've never read that out loud, but um, they asked, did your shop grow from YouTube? Um. I think it definitely helps having a YouTube channel or just like any social media presence so they can see the work you've done. Like if you don't have an Instagram or anything, I don't know if I would trust a person cause like if they're like a crochet shop and they don't have any pictures, then I'm just like, wait, what do you make? So it definitely helps to like have a YouTube or Instagram. I think it did help me get discovered by other people just cause of like the SEO and people can find me much easier since I do have a lot of videos and they can see me as a person making it and actually kind of connect with me so they feel like oh like this person puts a lot of time and care into like making her products maybe i will buy from her rather than this person who doesn't have any pictures of their items and i just i don't know who they are you know so i guess it kind of helps knowing the owner of the business in that way miriam suggested cotton gold yarn i'm gonna search that up later but i'm very excited to try that animal lover 14 asked have i ever made a blanket yes i did for my dad's birthday i crocheted it in like two days probably took me like 10 hours to make because i also did this like little art thing on it i'll put a picture right here please remember editing alley <laughs> um yeah, I was actually pretty happy with how it turned out. It took so long to make. And I even used chunky yarn. So good luck if you want to make a blanket for Christmas because it's going to take you a long time. Um, Katie asked what my favorite thing to crochet is. I already answered like most of these comments, but um, what did I say? I think I answered, oh yeah, clothing. Because especially when I make it for myself, because when you wear it, it's just like what i made this like when i wear my crochet cardigan that was the first thing i ever made that i could wear and i was just like walking around in it i wore it to like fancy restaurants like i don't know i just i was very proud of it and i'm still proud of it like wow i can actually make clothes which was always my dream so long story short I know I rambled on for a long time and I'm no longer crocheting because that pattern is so hard, but hopefully I can finish it later. Everyone has 24 hours in a day. And if you are privileged enough to choose what you do in those 24 hours, make sure you schedule, you plan, you know what you value, what you prioritize, because in the end, what you prioritize is probably gonna get done first, right? Like. If you prioritize watching TV, you're probably gonna watch TV for the most of the day. And then if you don't prioritize school, you're probably gonna do schoolwork last. Like my brother, he really prioritizes school. He studies nonstop. I, I don't relate at all. And that's what he does. That's why he does most of his time. And then gaming. For me, I prioritize crochet, uh, work, church, and... Um, singing? I don't know. I have a lot of hobbies, okay? So I pick and choose which one am I gonna focus on today and that's what I do. Oh, prioritize exercise recently, only recently. 
and that just helps me to balance everything so for those of you who don't know how to balance your life still hopefully these tips helped you <laughs> i don't even know <laughs> i am exhausted from the day but i will make another video if this didn't make any sense i'm open to your comments let me know if this video made any sense or not and <laughs> i'm so sorry i could not finish this this was a struggle but it is it's pretty because of the yarn color anyway <laughs> thank you for watching this video i'm still gonna post it even though it, it probably doesn't make sense but yeah thank you for spending time with me and see you tomorrow for my last video of the series i hope i can pull it off because it's gonna be a long one i think okay thank you so much for watching see you tomorrow bye bye